Hello and welcome to my channel. I am the DUI Ad and I will show you how I build this e-bike using an e-bike kit. So let's get started. This is the hub I will be using. Originally it came to be the 26 inch rims. So I decided in the end to switch to 28 ones. I had to lace the view myself. I will show that briefly. We have the controllers with the waterproof connections. We have the 4-in-1 cable, which is used to connect the throttle, the LCD screens and the brake levers. And of course, we have the battery pack, which I built this one myself. I will use this controller instead. I have purchased additionally. It fits under the battery pack. Actually, it's the mounting base for the battery. I prefer better than using that one because I will have a much cleaner look in the end with the overall bike. I have some extra cables for cable management I will be using. You're gonna see that later in the video. And of course, I have the light with a proper light cable so I can use the light option. This was the first time for me lacing a wheel. I was hesitant, I was thinking to just bring it to the bike shop and I was happy I decided to do it myself. If you're hesitant as well, I say just do it. You have some basic rules you need to follow and if you fail, you can always bring it to the bike shop so they can do the rest of the work. This is my end result. I'm quite pleased and time will show how this will hold up. Now I need to prep the wheel. Before I can add the tube and the tire, I need to put a rim tape. If you don't have any bike tape you can use electrical tape it will do the same job there's no need to buy one if you don't have it when mounting the tire make sure you're using the proper direction you will find a small error on the side of the tire telling you on which direction the tire needs to spin. If you haven't purchased any tires yet, I would highly recommend investing a bit more and getting the puncture proof one. That will save you a lot of time because having a flat on your rear wheel is no fun. You will need to disconnect the hub and remove the wheel to be able to exchange the tube and that takes a time. And also you will need to redo the cabling afterwards. So I would suggest investing in a puncture proof tires. I will use a Shimano 10 speed cassette for this e-bike build as my hub is a cassette hub. You have a difference between a cassette hub and a free wheel hub. So make sure you know which one you're getting. There's also a difference in the hubs themselves. You have a direct drive and a geared hubs. Uh, direct drive hubs are mostly used in motorcycles because they're heavier and if you don't have power it's much harder to pedal. Uh, using a geared hub you can pedal with no issues if you're out of juice. Make sure when you're purchasing your kit that you know what you're getting. I will put some link in the description you can check them out. I will put the kit I'm using and other stuff in this video. But in the end, it's up to you to read more, to educate yourself so you know what you're getting and what you need. I will spend the time to do the cable management properly. I know there are a lot of people and videos saying you can build an e-bike with a kit under a few hours, which is certainly true, but that's not the way to go. You're building an e-bike, your pride and joy, that you're gonna drive for years. So spending some extra hours to do it properly is the way to go. It's nothing difficult, but it's something that you will need to put your time in. In the end, you will end up with a clean looking e-bike that you will be proud of and showing off to everybody else.
This is the waterproof connector for the pedal assist. I forgot to press record, so I will tell you what I did. I used the hot glue to put it in place. I also mount the sensor on the bottom side because it's better for the cable management. Most of the people are putting it on the top, but there's no need. So it's up to you, but I would say just put it on the bottom. You don't need to see it and it's better for the cable management. I'm mounting the battery base for a second because I need to mark where I need to drill the hole. My plan is to drill a 23mm hole so I can feed the cables inside the tube. I purposely choose this frame because it's more of a heavy duty one, it's thicker and it can handle the stress. So if you're planning to do something similar, make sure your frame can handle it. I will show all the process. And I will also use my 3D printer to print a small gasket with a flexible filament to cover the hole. This is a 4-in-1 cable which is used to connect the LCD screen throttle and the brake levers which we're not gonna use. I will feed the cable inside the tube and take it out from the other side from the hole I have created. Afterwards I will solder the light with a proper connector. I couldn't find a light strong enough with a proper connector so I decided to purchase them separately. It's important for me to have a strong light at night, especially if you're driving an e-bike with high speed. So make sure when you're buying an e-bike kit that your controller has a light option. This is something that you don't think about, but down the road you would wish you did. What's the point of having a huge battery and your light source needs to be powered by something else? I'm finishing up with connecting everything in. I started working with the biggest connector first because it was easier to feed them inside the tube than work my way to the smallest one. I would recommend using this kind of a controller because you have a much sleeker e-bike. I will link most of the stuff I'm using in the description. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. But have in mind, I'm no expert.
have printed the 3D gasket to fit the hole I have made. I used the flexible filament and the leftovers of the paint I have used on the bike. So everything ties together really nicely. And the small details like this to make a big difference in the end, at least that's my opinion. And that is why when I say spend some time on your e-bike, um, it's a weekend project, you don't need to rush it. I will quickly go on the LCD screen settings so I can properly set up my e-bike. You will probably don't need to do this if you're buying an e-bike kit except if you want to play around with a throttle and your pedal assist. There's some great options but I will not get into this. Uh, if you're interested I can make a separate video on this. For now I will just skip over. Putting the seat on is the last thing I need to do before I'm finished and ready to drive the e-bike. In the test drive clip I will talk about the overall performance and the cost of this e-bike build. You will be surprised how cheap it was. The hub is rated for 350 watts but peaks above 650. In my testing I was able to quickly reach a constant speed of 36-37 km per hour and I am a 105 kilo rider. I'm reaching a speed of 31 km per hour uh, using the pedal assist but I'm basically just turning the pedals, I'm not helping at all just easier than holding the throttle. The battery pack is an 17M 36V battery pack I have built myself. I will link that video in the end if you're interested to check it out. The overall price of the e-bike build including the battery pack was around 850-900 US dollars. It was quite cheap and I was actually quite surprised. If you have any questions, if I have missed something, please leave a comment. I will try my best to give you an answer.
I hope you enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If you did, please put a thumbs up. It will help me greatly. And don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming projects. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.